By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at the finals of the Often Troll Cup 3. So this is the last match in our series. We've done six episodes so far. This is episode number seven. And in this episode, we're going to look at the final. And the final is going to be between Wilfred and Anna. And Wilfred is playing with the colors white and red and he's splashing blue power. I've just called it white, red, blue mid-range for lack of a better name. When you see the deck photo and you have an idea for a cool deck name, please let me know in the comments below. And talking about cool, his opponent Anna is just playing with an amazing, fantastic deck and I'm so happy that it made it all the way to the finals. It is a reanimator deck full of cool creatures with of course a play set of Bazaar of Baghdads. Now before I continue with the deck tech section of this video, I would just like to point out that as always you can also skip this section by clicking on the timestamp called MTG Games. If you click on that one, you go straight to the action. I know that some of you enjoy going first to the match video, then to the deck tech or skip the deck tech altogether. So you can kind of decide for yourself when you want to watch what using timestamps in the description below. And in the description below, you can also find links to the Often Troll Cup Facebook page, to the Instagram. You know, you can um, contact the organizer if you want. Ron, who, you know, Ron, you did a great job, by the way. So shout out to you. Um, yeah, so those are the options. Also, you can get to know more about the rule set. So now that that's all clear and out of the way, we are going to continue here with the deck tech. And I'm going to start with the deck of Wilfred. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Wilfred. And as you can see, it's kind of a mix of several components, right? We, for example, we see two Atogs, so not four. So I wouldn't really call this an Atog deck. And yet we see some characteristics of an Atog deck. We see, for example, four Black Vice. Then we also see a couple of, you know, characteristics of maybe a Lion Dip deck because we see the four Savannah Lions. We also see, you know, that Armageddon. Huh? When you get ahead, cast the Armageddon and take over the board. But of course, we don't see any um, Surrendips. Instead, we're seeing four Suchis, which is a little bit more costly to cast, but still it's a four, a four, 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 which is great value. And remember, we are playing Swedish magic. So that means that there's no mana burn. So when your opponent destroys like disenchants a Suchi, you're not very likely to take those four points of damage. So that's of course, you know, making Suchi slightly better in the Swedish format. We also see three Sarah Angels, which is actually quite a lot. Usually in these type of decks, I would expect to see maybe two. So three is, is pretty much on the high end there because it's actually the, the card with the highest casting cost as well. And of course, we see that injection of blue power. You see that with more and more decks, right? The core are just one or two colors and then they add blue, but the blue is really nothing more than just the three uh, power cards. And we see that with black as well a lot, right? People adding black to their deck, but actually it's only Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. So in this deck, we see the choice has gone towards um, a Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, and of course Time Twister. So those are the three cards that are in there. And don't underestimate those draw sevens in combination with Black Vice. And I'm sharing this with you from exper experience because I played against this deck in the semifinals, and that's exactly how Wilfred killed me in the decisive third game. Black Vice, Wheel of Fortune, I drew tons of lands and just got, got a lot of damage. It's all part of the game, but it's definitely a strength of this deck, you know. Um, okay, what else is there to see? I think in a sideboard we see uh, a City in a Bottle. I think City in a Bottle could be relevant in this matchup um, because it can get rid of the Bazaar of Baghdads. Now, the difficult thing with Bazaar of Baghdad is as soon as it comes into play, you can use it, right? It's just a land. You can tap it immediately and use the ability. So what you want to do is try to get the City in a Bottle out as fast as you can to kind of blocking those Bazaar of Baghdads in the hand of Anna, you know, and... Best case scenario, they will not allow Anna to play out his Bazaar, which is huge because remember, he's playing Reanimator. Bazaar is very important for his strategy. And, um, you know, in the worst case scenario, he'll be, you know, forced to play a Shatter on uh, the city in a bottle. And at least it will kind of slow him down, you know, to kind of play out the Bazaar of Baghdad. So I do think that city in a bottle is going to be interesting. Obviously, it's not gonna, going to be as strong as you would want it to be because when we look at the creatures in Anna's deck, 
you know, he hardly plays with any Arabian Nights. But, I, I, you know, I think, let me know in the comments below, would you board in the city in a bottle? I think I would, just because Bazaar is so incredibly important. And now looking at the rest of the sideboard, we do see two Karmas. And I wonder if he's going to play with Karma, because, of course, his opponent has some black sources. Uh, I do believe he's probably going to board in those red elemental blasts. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup also after sideboarding. Another thing I really love in the sideboard here, by the way, are the two forks. And I wonder maybe, Wilfred, uh, if you watch this, can you let me know if you've used the forks a lot? And um, yeah, your opinion about the forks in the sideboard, did that work out for you? Okay, so here we see the deck of Wilfred. Now let's have a look at the deck of his opponent, Anna. And here we see the deck of Anna, and this will probably look familiar because we also saw this deck in the semi-finals where it performed really, really well against D. I mean, that was an impressive display of how good Reanimator can be. And just for people that don't know, okay, what is Reanimator? Reanimator basically is the strategy of putting big creatures in your graveyard and getting them back, in this case with Animate Dead and All Hallows Eve. And what's the best way to get the creatures in the bin in old school? Bazaar of Baghdad. It's just amazing how good that card is if you want to fill your graveyard. Land from Arabian Nights, you can tap it to draw two cards and then you've got to discard three, which in this case is ideal. You want to discard all your big boys, your Shivan Dragons, your Mahamoti Jins, your Sulkanars, your Triskelions. You want to put them in your graveyard and then you want to get them back with a well-timed All Hallows Eve or of course with just an anime deck getting a single creature back. So we saw in the semifinals how deadly this deck can be, and I think it can be very deadly again. I do believe that this matchup is going to be a little bit more 50-50 because it looks like, uh, you know, the deck of Wilfred has a little bit more tricks up his sleeve. Although I still think that after seeing that deck in the semis from Anna, that he's still kind of the favorite for me in this matchup. But we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Of course, I'm hoping for to just see all the three games. It's not going to be a one-sided match one way or the other. Um, just a quick glance at the sideboard. He's probably going to board in his blue elemental blast, considering he's playing a lot of red cards in the deck of Wilfred. I'm also expecting him to board in the bolts because they're just great against those Atox and those Savannah lines. But the hard thing here is the more you board in your deck, the more you've got to board out. And with a deck like Reanimator, you've got such a solid A game plan that whatever you take out, you make your A plan weaker. So that's definitely going to be a challenge and maybe Anna if you want to it would be cool uh, to hear from you what you've decided to board in and out after the first game that might be quite interesting for us to know okay so this is the deck of Anna we've already looked at the deck of Wilfred and that means that it is time we're gonna go to the final of the often Troll cup three let's do it game number one of the finals of the often troll cup we have Anna sitting on the right he's on the play here he just took a mulligan so he has to decide if he wants to keep his hand and on the left we have Wilfred who is playing with his white red and blue mid-range deck and there we see Anna playing out a city of brass and passing turn so he's got five cards in hand now after that mulligan and of course eight cards here for Wilfred there is a tundra and a mox mox pearl does he have a lion in hand? I think so. Yep, there is the Savannah lion. So that is a good start here for Wilfred. But a quick response by Anna. Bolt on the lion. So he's going to drop to 19 because of his own City of Brass. He's going to draw another card here. Playing an Underground Sea. Playing a Mox Jet and a Pass Turn. There's an Untap. And I do see a Suchi in hand there, but he doesn't have enough mana, of course, to play it out yet. He is playing a Plateau. If he's got another Mox, for example, he could play out a Suchi and put some more pressure on here. And, you know, Anna, he really needs his Bazaar of Baghdad to make his deck work. So maybe he doesn't have one in hand. There's a pass turn. Then again, you know, with the Bazaar, you kind of want to make sure that you know when to play it out. Okay, there is the Bazaar of Baghdad. Activation here by Anna. So he's drawing two cards, and now he has to discard three cards, which is great for Reanimator. Exactly. Here we see the big boys hitting the bin. The Soul Canard, the Swamp King, and a Sheevan Dragon. Oh, and there we see an All Hallows Eve. This is what Anna wants to do. At least Wilfred has that one um, Savannah line that will come back to life as well. But that's, of course, nothing compared to a Soul Canard, the Swamp King, and a Sheevan Dragon. So let's hope for Wilfred that he's got some answers to those bigger creatures. 
He still has the Suchi in hand. He of course plays with white, so he has access to swords to plowshares. I wonder what he's going to do now. At least with All Hallows Eve, you know it's coming. And he's got, a f after this, he's got another full turn. So he can kind of start thinking, what can I do against this uh, brutality that's coming my way? There we see a Suchi and a pass turn here. So another counter is going to go off of the uh, All Hallows Eve. They're called Scream Counters. Now he's got one Scream Counter left. When they're all gone, the All Hallows Eve resolves. And the two big creatures will come into the bin. Uh, sorry, uh, onto the battlefield from the bin, from the graveyard. And we see no activation of the Bazaar of Baghdad. There is a Tundra. He's probably going to attack for four. Does he have other options? He does play with three Sarah Angels and he's got five mana now. There we see Anna dropping to 14 after the attack with the Suchi. And he's gonna, okay, tap four. There is another Suchi. So there is some pressure on the board. On the end step, he's gonna activate his Bazaar. So they're both, oh, and there's another Shivan Dragon. Untap, upkeep, and he's gonna trigger it in a way that he can first use his Bazaar again. Oh, Mahamoti! Oh, this is insane. Look at that. Oh, man. Two Shivan Dragons. Two and a Mahamoti and a Sulkanar, the Swamp King. That's just crazy. Oh man, this is already game, isn't it? I mean, he's first gonna attack for 15 through the air. He can pump it to 17. He's gonna attack with the Sulkanar. I, at least, you know, when you're Wilfred, he's got one turn. Okay, end step, there is at least one Swords. So he's gonna go back up to 19 after that Swords. I mean, you really need a Wrath of God against this deck. Control Magic also works really well against this deck. But those are two cards that Wilfred doesn't have. At least he needs another Swords. If he can at least just Swords one creature, like the, the Shivan Dragon, then he'll just take five next turn and he'll, he'll have some more space. But he is passing turn here. Of course, Swords is an instant. So it doesn't mean that he doesn't have it, but I mean, look at his hand, only two cards in hand. And here's the attack, attacking here for 15. And I'm expecting him perhaps to double block the Sulkanar. No, he's gonna block and he's gonna bolt. That makes sense, that's a pretty good exchange. And he's gonna take 10 damage. And it looks like Anna is not going to pump, so he's going to drop to 10. And another Sheevan Dragon! This is <laughs> insane! Yeah, at least he takes 2 damage from the City of Brass, but this is just a power, powerhouse move by Anna. And that's it, that's, at least that's game number 1. Don't worry, it's not that's it yet, it's just game 1. And, I mean, both players are going to go to their sideboards. And, you know, anything can still happen. It's only one game up. So it's a, it's a 0-1 here for Anna in the finals of the Often Troll Cup. Game number two, here we go. So one game up for Anna, the player on the right. The player on the left, Wilfred, is on the play here. It looks like Anna is gonna take another mulligan. I believe it's even a double, perhaps. Let's see how many cards he's gonna put on the bottom here. It's really in the tank. Yep, yeah, two cards there on the bottom. At least he's on the, on the draw, so it's gonna go up to six after. So five cards in hand for now. There we see a Mishra's Factory and a pass. I guess when you're with Wilfred, you want to play very, very quick, very aggressive, that you don't give Anna the time to just do his bizarre shenanigans. So he's probably going to animate here, attack for two, exactly. Taking that risk to run into a bolt, I think that's a good decision. And by the way, Anna hasn't played out a land. I didn't notice it at first, but that's of course a Mox Ruby and another pass. Wow, so this is looking really good for Wilfred. If he can get another land, exactly, he can at least swing in for three, pump his Mishra's Factory with his other Mishra's Factory. So he's gonna animate, he's gonna attack, he's probably gonna pump it up to three here. And no Lightning Bolt still from Anna, and only that single Mox Ruby. There we see a Strip Mine, okay, at least that's something that's gonna save him a damage. But this is great for Wilfred. Can he find a Savannah Lines or an Atok? 
Doesn't have white mana yet, by the way. There's a volcanic island. Animate attack for two. There we see Ana dropping to 18. There is Bazaar of Baghdad. Uh oh. Now he's going to draw cards, put the fatties in the bin, and he's going to keep the lands. There we see Mahamoti, Triskelion, and another Bazaar and passing turn here. So when you are uh, Wilfred, you're really hoping that Anna doesn't have a Swamp and an anime dead in hand there. Because then he could get back that Mahamoti Jin and it's kind of going to stop Wilfred from attacking. Also, he doesn't have a White Source, so he cannot um, play out any Disenchants. This is interesting. Tapping 4, so this is probably a switch. Okay, switch on the board. I want to say interesting because is he going to strip the Bazaar? Because the bazaar already did its damage. There we see an underground sea. And there's probably an anime dead here. Okay, Mahamoti Jin. It's now a 4-6 Mahamoti because of the anime dead. Let's see if Wilfred has an answer. Perhaps he's got a bolt in hand as well. Then he can attack with the Tsuchi. And if Anna blocks on the Mahamoti, he can spend a bolt. There we see the attack. I think that's probably the most likely scenario. Now the question is, does Anna want to block? Why not? Worst case scenario, it's a two for one for him. So there's the bolt exactly. And the Suchi's gone as well. Are we now going to see a strip? I, I think I would strip here, to be honest. Again, it's easy to say from my position. I think I would strip the underground sea. Exactly, another anime dead here. There's a volcanic island. On the other hand, if you strip, maybe he has another underground sea or uses his bazaar. Oh, ancestral recall. This is so good. Are we gonna see a red elemental blast from the sideboard? No, we are not. So he's allowed to draw three here. That also makes his bazaar of Baghdad even better. And look at the amount of mana that Anna has. Only one more black source and he can start playing out an all Hallows Eve. There's a tap four, another Suchi perhaps, another Suchi. It's so difficult here for, for Wilfred play, playing against a deck like this, right? Because when you kill a creature, you know it's going to come back at least once. It's going to keep haunting you. Is he going to attack here? He's on 13. Another anime dead perhaps? No, a Sylvan Library does take a damage. I'm expecting him here to keep his uh, Mahamoti Jin on blocking duty. And remember, we're here at the second game. On the one, the first game, Wilfred has to win this one. And the longer the game takes, I think the less chance Wilfred has. Of course, he does have some uh, serious direct damage in his deck as well. I mean, if he's got a disenchant, you know, then he can just kill the Mahamoti and attack for four. So he's attacking with the Suchi. Are we going to see another bolt? Looks like there's a block again, and there's the tap. Ooh, interesting. Okay, there's a disintegrate, so a slightly different strategy. There's the blue elemental blast. Ah, that is unfortunate for Wilfred here. So that means he's losing the Suchi, he's losing the Disintegrate, and the problem, the Mahamoti Jin is still there. This is really bad business for Wilfred. And of course, Disintegrate is a great card, by the way, because it removes a creature from the game. But unfortunately for Wilfred, there was that blue Elemental Blast. And now Anna can look at the top three because of the Sylvan. And Sylvan Library, Bazaar of Baghdad, All Hallows Eve, that all works together so incredibly well. Wilfred's going to drop to 15. Actually to 16 exactly because it is a 4-6 because of the minus 1, minus 0 oh from Anime Dead. There's another Underground Sea here. Three cards in hand and a pass turn. And Wilfred here really taking his time. I mean, he knows that he's in trouble. He started off well, but 
very, very quickly on, the game turned on him with that anime dead on the Mahamoti Jin. And it's so hard to deal with a deck that's built around Bazaar of Baghdad because Bazaar of Baghdad, of course, is a land. There is the Suchi and a pass. Three cards drawn here, one card put back. There's the attack again, four through the air, so Wilfred's going to drop to 12. There is a Batland, tapping six, Sheevan Dragon. Oh, Triskelion. Slightly less bad, but still really, really bad. I mean, that's the problem here for Wilfred. The longer the game takes, the more likely it is for Anna to kind of get his All Hallows Eve plan working, or just to have enough mana to hardcast all those big beefy creatures. So it's a problem either way. And we really saw that in this game where, where uh, Wilfred tried to play very aggressively. But he couldn't find the Atop, couldn't find the Savannah Lines, and now he just cannot find a solution to that Mahamoti Jin that's kind of been here for a while now. Has attacked twice, Wilfred's on 12. Doesn't have a white source still, so he cannot cast Disenchant, he cannot cast Balance, he, he cannot cast Swords. And the time is slowly ticking away here. I mean, he's definitely going to take 4 through the air next turn by Anna. At least he's got more cards in hand, so hopefully for him that offers him some options. And of course, Anna is stepped out as well, but there's just a pass turn, or not. Okay, tapping three. I understand this decision. I understand it. You know, when, when you're playing against Anna, it's, it's better for Anna not to have a graveyard, and Time Twister solves that. And yes, there's the Bazaar of Baghdad, but maybe he can find a city in a bottle if you boarded that in, and he can still play it out because he's got two lands open. And he was losing anyway, and when you're in the losing position, you got to change the situation, and at least that's what he's doing with the Time Twister. Of course, the downside here of the Time Twister is you're giving Anna a lot of cards, and it works together really well with the Bazaar, but I think it was the only choice for Wilfred in this situation. I would have done the same. So both players shuffling up here, and things are looking really, really, really good for Anna. He's already game up, he's in a winning position. And now, I mean, you can have bad luck with your hand, right? Maybe Anna's going to draw into seven lands, who knows? Or maybe Wilfred's going to find the perfect seven here. A good start would be a disenchant, a white source and a disenchant. A city in a bottle for the bazaar would be good as well. Of course, he could strip the Bazaar of Baghdad, but then again, there's still three bazaars in the deck of Anna. There's a pretty big chance he's got another bazaar in hand. But maybe he should, he should just take the risk. Okay, there we see a Mox Ruby. And right now I'm not quite sure if he already played a land this turn. I'm starting to doubt myself because he's not playing out a land yet. Okay, there we see a land. At least he's got a white source of basic planes. Another card that would re work really well against Anna's deck, by the way, is a Blood Moon. But Blood Moon is not in the deck of uh, Wilfred because he's also playing with a lot of non-basic lands himself. But a Blood Moon would definitely shut down the deck of, uh, of Anna. Now he's going to animate the Mistress Factory. Interesting. He's going to attack with the Factory, attack with the Suchi, so he really wants to put pressure on. Perhaps he's found some new direct damage in hand. I mean, remember, Anna is on 11, so dealing a little bit of combat damage and some uh, some bolts might just do it here for Wilfred, but of course, Anna knows this as well. Is he gonna use the counters, for example, from the trike to kill the factory? Is he just gonna block the factory and take four from the Suchi? There are a lot of options here. 
And I guess if you're on there, you don't really mind your your trike being in the bin. I wonder what he's gonna do here. He's just taking the damage. Wow, what a risk. He's taking the damage. Now we're probably gonna see a plow. No, we're gonna see a Savannah Lines. At least it gives him a blocker, although Anna can kill it quite easily with the trike, just taking a counter off, targeting the lion. Vilfred's still on 12. He is taking a risk here, but of course he has to. You gotta to play towards your outs when your back's against the wall here. Savannah Lines is getting killed. So that means he can deal six damage at least, and then two more if he takes off the counter, so that's eight damage. really wonder what's going to happen here. There we see the attack for 7. I said 6, but it's of course 7. The trike is a 3-3, three, three, so 7 damage. That would mean Wilfred is going to drop here. Unless, of course, he's got a bolt, he's going to drop to 5. There is a bolt. At least it's going to save him some damage, but now in response he can still deal 2. That's so annoying about the trike. So he's going to go to 10. Then he's going to take 4 from the Mahamoti. So he's going to drop to 6. There we go. So he's on 6. I'm somewhere here. I'm expecting a big creature in a time walk or something. Oh, look at this. He's showing his hand. He's saying, okay, look, I've, I've, I've got you. This is what I can do. So he's going to play the time walk here for an extra turn. He's going to play the Demonic Tutor. And he's basically explaining what he's going to do. So let's just actually listen to his explanation here. Okay, so we're going back in time. We're hearing here the original Dutch audio. So he's explaining what he's going to do. He's going to play Time Walk first, get an extra turn. Before that, he's going to use his Demonic Tutor. So now he's going to cast Demonic Tutor. He's going to get back the Regrowth. Then he's going to get back to Time Walk. That means he can get another extra turn. And here you can hear the crowd. hear here on that moment of audio there's actually quite a lot of audience here uh, to watch the final which was great uh, there was just a great atmosphere in the entire tournament and we just like to thank Rome for organizing the Often Troll Cup and I can I cannot recommend it enough if you have a chance you have to visit this tournament you have to be part of it it's just absolutely fantastic uh, it's held every year probably also next year keep an eye on the instagram and the facebook page of the off control cup the links are in the description below and for now i would like to thank you for watching another episode right here on timmy talks and before you go i would like to uh, ask for your help please consider liking this video sharing it on your socials and comment all those three things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward so if you do that it's really really appreciated and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing and ring that bell oh man what a great 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 tournament it was and how cool it is to see such a beautiful deck win a big event like this congratulations on here we see another picture of this beautiful deck oh man this man just has one of the coolest old school magic collections in the entire country, in the entire uh, country of the Netherlands, that is, of course. And I know it's a small place, but don't underestimate it. There are so many great old school collections here in the Netherlands. It's actually kind of insane if you look at how small the country is. Anyway, I'm babbling. Um, before we go to the end scroll, because I guess that's what we're going to go to now, I would just like to point out that if you enjoy the content that I make, you can also become a sponsor of the show. And how can you do that? It's quite simple. Click on the info card that's appearing right now, and that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And uh, by clicking on the Patreon page, you can start supporting Timmy Talks. It already starts with just $1 a month. And the cool thing is, you will get access to our Discord. You will get access to the Timmy Talks events. And also, uh, your name will be on the end scroll after every video. 
every video, including this one? Yes, including this one. As a matter of fact, let's go to the end scroll and take a look at our fantastic, wunderbar, amazing channel members and patrons. Let's go. Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.